Assalamu alaikum, good afternoon everybody. Uh, I'll be talking to you about the LV felling pressure. And my reference mainly will be taken from the 2016 uh, American Society of ECHO guidelines of, diast of uh, evaluation of LV diastolic function. But we need to understand few terminology here. What do we mean by LV felling pressure? Is it pulmonary capillary wedge pressure? Is it the mean LA pressure or LV pre-atrial contraction pressure or the LV and diastolic pressure? So we really need to differentiate between uh, these terms. Actually, we are interested of the filling pressure which will cause pulmonary edema, which will cause congestion and patients will come to the emergency room because it's an emergency course. So let me show you here. It started as LV minimal pressure. This is the earliest time in diastole where the LV diastolic pressure is at its minimum. Once the mitral valve opens, it's, uh, the LV starts to fill, and then we will have the LV rapid filling wave. Then we have the LV pressure pre-A or pre-atrial contraction. And then the after atrial contraction, we will have the LV EDP. LV EDP, if it is elevated, it does not cause congestion or pulmonary edema at rest. So what we are interested in actually is the LA pressure or LA mean pressure. This is the LA pressure here. You notice the Y and X descend, the A wave, the B wave, etc. And we take the mean. It resembles or can be resembled by the, papillary, uh, the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure. How to measure LVDP? I will skip this because we don't need it right now. But mainly because it's in diastolic pressure. It's, it's towards the end of diastole. It's all related to the A wave. A wave velocity, um, amplitude, timing, A reversal, etc. But we don't need to know that, for now at least. This example is a patient came to you in the emergency room with this X-ray and this echo. Does this echo explain his X-ray? The answer will be likely yes. But it's not 100% because we know that we have compensated heart failure. We, in order to answer this question, we have to answer two questions. Is diastolic function normal? Question number two, is LA pressure elevated? For question number one, sometimes it's very easy. If you have abnormal systolic function, then the diastolic function will be absolutely abnormal. If you have regional wall motion, depressed, systolic function, ejection fraction, um, pathological hypertrophy, it means the diastolic function is abnormal. Then you go to second question, is LA pressure elevated or not? The dilemma comes when there is a normal systolic function, no hypertrophy, no pathology you can see on the LV during systole. Then you have to check four parameters, namely, the E wave velocity and E over E prime ratio. Septal and lateral uh, E prime velocity, which is the velo velocity of the relaxation. TR velocity and LA volume index to the body surface area. So what happens during the solid dysfunction initially? So as you can see, start from the LV, on the left of the screen, sorry, on the right of the screen here, you have impaired relaxation. All diastolic dysfunction, grade one, grade two, grade three, and maybe grade four if you wish to call it, has impaired relaxation. So it starts with, with the LV impaired relaxation and we measure it by measuring the velocity of the relaxation, i.e. the E prime um, in septum and lateral world. Then what will happen? when the diastolic function become worse and worse, 
LA pressure will become higher and then you measure it by measuring the LA volume and the E and A uh, velocities. Then with time we have pulmonary edema. Increased pulmonary vascular resistance and this will reflect back on the right side and tricuspidric edge. And you can see here that the peak TR uh, will be elevated. So back, question number one. Is diastolic function normal? The answer is, if systolic function is absolutely normal, we have to go into this algorithm. Having the four parameters, is average E over E prime more than 14? Is the septal E velocity uh, less than 7? Or the lateral E velocity less than 10? Is the TR velocity more than 2.8? Is the LA volume dilated? i.e. more than 34 mL per meter square. If most of the answers is yes, it is abnormal, then we have diastolic dysfunction. If most of the answer is no, it is normal, then the diastolic function is normal. Because we have four items, we can have two normal, two abnormal, then it is indeterminate to say, or to assess the diastolic function based on these parameters. Maybe we have to look into something else. Question number two, after knowing that there is a diastolic dysfunction, we have always to start with the EA ratio to grade the filling pressure. Sometimes it is very easy. If EA ratio is more than two, this is grade three. What I mean by grade three is impaired relaxation and very high LA pressure. If it is less than the ratio, less than 0 0.8, plus the E velocity is less than 50 cm, then this is grade one. What I mean by grade one, LA pressure is not elevated, and whatever symptoms at rest he is having uh, is not related to his filling pressure. The complication comes in the middle. When we have, uh, when it does not fit either grade one or grade three. Then we have to uh, check the items. The four items minus the E uh, prime velocity. We don't need E prime velocity here because we know it's already abnormal. Average E over E prime more than 14, TR velocity more than 2.8, and LA volume more than 34 mL per meter square. If most is abnormal, i.e. two out of three is abnormal, LA pressure is elevated and it is grade 2. If most is normal, then normal LA pressure and is grade 1. If you have one positive, one negative, and the third one you don't have it for any reason, then it is indeterminate. Remember the number 50 here is very important. Was this validated, this algorithm? The answer is yes. Last year what they did, they studied the algorithm of the 2016 guidelines against invasive LV pressure, mean LV diastolic pressure, and against the 2009 guidelines. And they concluded that the 2016 diastolic guidelines for estimation of lift heart filling pressure are more user friendly and are uh, more efficient than the 2009 guidelines and provide accurate estimates for LV filling pressure. If I want you to remember one thing outside the algorithm, remember pulmonary veins. Before you say indeterminate, have a quick look at a pulmonary vein. Normal pulmonary veins will have S systolic wave here, which is bigger than the diastolic wave. And if the diastolic wave is bigger, this is abnormal unless a young patient, maybe less than 40, and with supernormal diastolic function, which at that time you should not have any confusion. If you check the E prime velocity, relaxation velocity, you will find it super high. Quick example. Uh, if you look at the picture on the left, you have E velocity, uh, of 37, 
and E over A ratio 0 0.6. This is straight away grade one. You don't need to look on into anything. No need for LA volume, no need for TR velocity, provided you already know that, that the historic function is abnormal. The example on the right, you have E over A ratio of 2.6 immediately, grade three. You don't need to look into anything else. Another example, you have this abnormal heart. So you know it's abnormal heart. You know the diastolic function will be abnormal. So if you look at the E over A ratio on the top left, it's 2.2. So you can stop here and say it's grade three, i.e. LA pressure is high. If you would like to finish the diastolic assessment, you look at the LA volume. Here is 30, uh, 43 dilated. E over E prime will become something like 22. Uh, TR velocity, 3.2. And it's grade 3, i.e. impaired relaxation with very high LA pressure. This is hypertrophic heart disease. Again, we know that diastolic function here is abnormal. Sometimes you have a fusion between E and A wave. If you have a fusion which happens at a velocity more than 20 here, you see, if you see the velocity here is more than 20, so that means that the fusion will alter the EA ratio, and then you are in a dilemma. You cannot say if there's grade two or three. But you still can use the other, and you can tell if the LA pressure is elevated or not. I will give you this quick case. You have a 56-year-old, old MI, ejection fraction 44. So immediately you skip algorithm number one, and you go to algorithm number two. You know the historic function is abnormal. He came with pulmonary edema. You want to know if this pulmonary edema due to high um, LA pressure. His E velocity here is 60. A is 80, and the ratio is 0 0.75. E over E prime will become 8.5. LA volume is elevated, is 36 mL per meter square. Unfortunately, there is no TR signal. Go to the algorithm, and what you will see here that it does not fit grade one, because despite E over A is less than 0.8, but E here, velocity is more than 50. So we have to go to the middle part. Is average E over E prime more than 14? No. Is TR velocity more than 2.8? I don't know, maybe. Is LA volume elevated? Is it dilated? The late answer is yes. So we have one positive, one negative, and the third one we don't know. So we, have, we can say indeterminate. But remember, before you say indeterminate, look at the pulmonary veins. This is his pulmonary vein. The, the wave to the right of the red line is the diastolic wave. The wave to the left of the, dead, uh, of the red line is the systolic. Here we have a clear systolic blunting. So the D is more than um, the S wave. So the diagnosis is grade two diastolic dysfunction and definitely the LA pressure is high. There are some special population where we cannot apply those rule I just talked about. Atrial fibrillation, severe mitral annular calcification, mitral stenosis, and mitral regurgitation. They have special tricks to do it and to elevate their um, LA pressure. I'll stop here and thank you very much for listening.